I'm Ted Melton, and okay. I've been doing this stuff with uh, orthopedic tables and fracture tables and general surgery tables for a long, long time. And asked me to come over and talk with you guys about um, how to set the chick table up for, basically for a hip, okay? Amy, have you worked on this table before? Yes. Do you like it? It's Be honest, kind of cumbersome. it's cumbersome, okay? When I do orthopedic in-services, in the first thing I tell people is the one cardinal rule, the one cardinal rule for orthopedics is that anything you loosen, you retighten. And you'll see that on any fracture table you use, whether it's this one or our new one or anybody else's or wherever you go, there's gonna be lots of parts and pieces that you have to loosen, set up, and then retighten, okay? Again, 90% of the procedures that you're going to be doing on any fracture table, including this one, and this, by the way, uh, probably the majority of your surgeons, if they're over 45 years old, trained on this table or a variation of it. This is an older chick table. It's probably 20 years old. We upgraded this table about, what, Pat, nine, eight, nine years ago? Yeah seven, eight years ago, something like that. We upgraded it to what we call the IOT, the Imageable Orthopedic Table. And we'll talk about that for in, in, in a little while. But um, again, anything you do on a fracture table, whether it's ours uh, or anybody else's, 90% of what you're gonna be doing is supine hip compressions, uh, of repairing of hip. The unfortunate thing about orthopedics is it's always trauma. It's always trauma. Whether it's a hip repair, whether it's a femoral rotting, whether it's a tibial repair, it's always trauma. And unfortunately, they usually occur at two o'clock in the morning on a snowy night. So you all need to know how to set this table up for the majority of those things, okay? Remember I said the first thing you do is to remember that anything you lock or anything you unlock, you lock. So let's assume that we've got a 78-year-old lady who stepped out of a cab at 10 o'clock at night, fell on the ice, and broke her hip, okay? Now there are some questions even among orthopedic surgeons. Do, they, do old people fall and break their hip or does their hip break and then they fall? I'm not sure anybody knows the answer to it, but your job is to make sure that when the surgeon gets in, you've got this table set up. So let's assume, Amy, that you're on call and you're in to set this up for a left hip, okay? The hardest thing you're gonna do to set this table up is to get it into the room. Because you can see, it's a big, bulky, heavy, it weighs 725 pounds, and don't try to move it by yourself, okay? You can move it, but you can't guide it. All right, so let's assume you get it into the room. The first thing you have to do is to determine which hip the doc's gonna be doing. If it's the left hip, you need to make sure that the table is positioned with the surgical lights on the left side. Because once we pump this up, you can't move the lights over the frame, okay? And nothing is gonna upset that surgeon more than to come in at 2.30 in the morning and you've got the lights over here and he's working on a right hip. So make sure you read the chart, make sure you know it's a left hip, make sure the lights are over here, all right? Assuming you've done that, first thing you do is to come and to lock the head end of the table. Head end of the table. Once that's locked, then there's a knob here that says lengthen and shorten. Then the whole table, the whole end of the table can be pulled out. And it should be pulled the entire length. And then we lock it down. And we lock it down tight. Okay? Because we're going to be pulling traction against this end of the table. Then we lock the foot end of the table. And these brakes are not real secure, but they'll hold. If we know it's going to be a left hip, then we can just leave this this spar, if you will, this contraption down here, out of the way. 
because the C arm is going to be coming in from this side. All right? So once we know it's going to be the left hip, then we know we're going to be pulling traction from the left side. So this will swing out. There's a knob down here that says lengthen and shorten. That should be loosened and pulled out all the way because we're going to be bringing the patient in from this side. Down at the head end of the table, there's a foot pedal. And this is where you get your aerobic exercise. This is not powered. Our new table and that table is powered, OK? A little commercial there, Amy. This goes all the way up. You'll notice that this is a, a two-stage pump. You'll notice that right now, just these lifting collars are going. When it gets to a certain point, the top itself will start going up. When you get to that point, you stop. See why it's important now to make sure you've got the lights where they should be? Okay, the top is starting to move up, so we'll stop pumping for right now. There are three things you need for orthopedic surgery. You need uh, a, a means of pulling traction, okay? And remember, in orthopedic surgery, you're not pulling traction against the bone, you're pulling traction against the muscles. Imagine that this is a femur or a hip, and the bone breaks. And when it breaks, those muscles contract, OK? So in order to get those, those bones realigned, you have to pull the muscles, not the bone, OK? So we're going to be pulling a lot of traction in order to get the muscles, the bone realigned. The other thing you need is a counter traction device. If you pull on something, it's going to pull right off the table unless you have a means of stopping it. So we're going to put a counter traction device in here. The other thing we're going to have to do is find something to do with the well leg, okay, the, the leg that's not affected. Who's never done this before? All right, you're on, honey. Come on up. Come on down. Okay, let's assume that, what's your name? Natasha. Natasha. Let's assume that Natasha is our 78-year-old patient. Great, she says. This is a well leg support. It should be, it should be on the table before the patient comes in. So the stretcher comes in and the patient is transferred to here. You want to get up there? You actually want me to lay down? Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. OK. All right. Once she's intubated, you, yeah, you can back up just a little bit. Once she's intubated, then once she's intubated, then we're going to set up the table for our right hip. Remember, we said we have to have traction, we have to have counter traction, and we have to have a place for the well leg. This is the part I like most right here. OK. <laughs> All right. The tabletop on this table is translucent, meaning there's no metal in the tabletop at all. But you have to have a way to attach an armboard, and you have to have a way to attach the well leg support. You will see two of these wherever you keep your orthopedic supplies. They simply slide on to the side of the table and, again, are tightened up. One goes on one side, one goes on the other side. Okay, so now we've attached a way to put the well leg support on and the arm board on. All right? This is called a traction hammer. Looks like a hammer. On here, we're going to attach our traction device. You have this already set up. This is called a bell traction device, and this is the traction cup. 
This will go onto here. Thank you. And again, as tight as you can get it. You'll notice that this traction device will swivel and the cuff will also rotate. But for right now, we're going to keep both of them nice and tight. Okay. Natasha, you can come back up. Yeah, you did. So now we've got, we're supporting the well leg. We've got a traction device set up. Now, the other thing we have to have is counter traction. This perineal post is going to be dropped. I'm a grandfather, honey, it's okay. <laughs> it's going to be dropped. You paid extra for this. <laughs> the counter traction is going to be dropped right at the perineal edge, and she's going to be pulled all the way down right against that post, right against the post. Once we've done that, then you'll notice that we're going to have to move this in and her leg goes up in the traction. With, with hip surgery, the doctor is going to want to keep the leg as anatomically parallel to the hip as he possibly can. So if it looks like it's going up, then we're simply going to lower this a little bit, okay? So it's as level as possible. So now we've got a counter traction device, we've got a means to pull traction, but we've got to do something with this leg to get it out of the way. On this side rail that we put on, we're going to attach a standard swivel clamp. It can be, you've got these laying around your OR everywhere. It goes on here. This is called an articulating bracket. And you will see when we put it on that we can do a figure eight with it. We can articulate it any way we wish. Your health insurance paid up? Yeah. Okay, good. This is called a well leg support. It simply drops into here. All right, now we can move this bracket just about any direction we wish. And into that, we're going to attach this well leg basket. Okay. All right, you ready for this? Yeah, because I have never seen it. That's why I'm up here. All right, can you lay flat? All right. Okay, once we've got her well leg in, now remember, she's going to be already intubated and asleep, so the doc is probably going to uh, abduct this as far away as possible. Once we, he's got it where he wants it, everything gets tightened down. Remember in orthopedics, anything you loosen, you retighten. So once she's up there, then we're going to attach the traction cuff. The traction cuff would be padded, maybe some Curlex in there, and that would go in there. This is called a planter's plate, and the doc is going to want that ankle or the bottom of that foot as close to perpendicular, as close as perpendicular to the heel as he can get it. That will keep it from sliding out. Okay. Everything is tightened, retightened. All right, so now we've got a traction cuff, to pull traction. We've got a counter traction device, and she would be pulled way down, way down, and a means to support the well leg. 
Once that's there, you okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, once that's there, this comes out and it's set aside, okay? We would attach an arm board here, okay, for anesthesia, but now she's suspended there and the doc is gonna come in the C arm is going to come in from the unaffected side, from the unaffected side, and take a shot of the hip. All right? If the doc doesn't like what he sees, then he's going to pull his gross traction from here. Okay? He's going to pull the traction, tighten it up. Another C arm is going to come in, take a shot, and then if he needs just a little bit more, he's gonna pull his finite traction from here. You've got eight inches of finite traction pull here. Once that's done, the final C arm comes in, he takes a shot, that's where I want it, guys. He goes out and he scrubs, okay, while you guys are prepping. The only thing that, he's, that we didn't set up is on hips, he's, you guys drape here for hips? Okay, these drape rods, would be moved to the operative side and he'll operate outside of the drape. Okay? So the, the drape rod, there's one on that pole over there. Yes. And the, how, where is there one over here? Oh, I see. Okay. And the other one would go over here. The whole unit comes off. Right. The entire unit comes off. All right? That's all there is to setting up a hip on this table. That's all there is. What about that blood pressure cuff thing? Good question. Great question. Blood pressure cuff is designed to be inflated, and we recommend that the, the cuff never be inflated to more than 100 PSI, or 100 millimeters of mercury, but never higher than the patient's systolic pressure. Okay? I will tell you that some of, the, some of the calls that we get is people don't come to the end services and they say, I can't get this thing unlatched. I can't get it unlatched. It's broken. There's a little flange there and they don't read the instructions. There's a little flange that says push up and hold and then it comes open. Okay? If you can set this table up, you need four things. You need a traction cuff. You need a perineal post, you need a place for the well leg, and you need a place to support the, the legs before you put them up in traction. Four pieces, and you can set this table up for a fracture, for a, a left hip. Questions? Can I get down? Not yet. <laughs> now, let's assume that the doc is also doing a femur, or gonna do a femur later on. If you can set this up for a, a left hip, you can set it up for a left femur. Because most of the docs are, the only thing they're gonna do different with a femur is they're going to adduct. Remember, adduct means to add to midline. They're going to adduct across midline so that they're coming in this way instead of straight on, All right? The only thing I didn't show you is that with a hip and a femur, the doc is probably going to want the table pumped up, as high, the table top, as high as it will go because he's going to want to look straight in at that hip and he's going to want to look straight in at that femur. Okay? Questions? Did you want to show him the bracket, the, the release on the back side of that? Yes. Good point. So let's assume that Natasha's surgery is over. She's going to walk again. Surgery's over. Doc says, thank you all. I'm going home. This goes back in. Her well leg comes out. The perineal post is taken out. She's taken out of traction. This is moved out of the way. Stretcher comes in and she's off to her room. Okay? 
Any questions? Okay. We usually, we usually keep the stirrup all put together, the articulating pieces and, and, the, and the support. Usually keep it together, you know, so that we don't have to do, we don't have to do that. But, um, but anyway, I think a lot of people don't know that that, that little handle, how to take that yeah. out. Yeah. The There's a little squeeze handle only on the right side, only on the right side, and you simply squeeze it and it comes off. Okay? and goes back in. Orthopedics can be intimidating, but the thing that you guys have got going for you on the orthopedic team is, one, the surgeons are, as a rule, are pretty good guys. And two, if you can set up for a hip, you can set up for anything else. A okay. um, couple things about the table. The only... The only metal in the top of the table is the three inches right at the very perineal edge. Everything else is carbon fiber. So if the doc wants to do an oblique shot for some reason, he can. The table will support and articulate 400 pound, a 400 pound patient. So you don't have to worry about the table tipping or the, the board breaking. And this has been tested to three times 400 pounds. So we know it's going to hold a 400 or 1,200 pound patient. Probably never going to get that. How much hydraulic fluid does this thing hold? You had a leak, you know. A couple you had a leak. Ago. And I don't know about how many how much I, hydraulic fluid. And it, you know, probably a lot of people don't know that it goes all the way. Yeah, it goes all the way through. There's probably four quarts. I, I don't know. I don't remember. Um, it can, hydraulic fluid can be replaced up here. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. <laughs> this is an old table, and it's been upgraded. So. <laughs> what I'd like to do, uh, with your permission, is to break the table down, and have a couple of people set it up and I would recommend I would recommend that the table be left set up for a left hip believe it or not most fractures occur on the left side maybe because the majority of the population is right-handed I don't know but most fract the majority of fractures occur on the left side of the body so if you keep it set up to do a left hip, and all you have to do then when you come in, and I'll show you how to put it in the storage mode, set up for a left hip. If, if it is a right hip, all you have to do is change everything. Okay, you put the well leg over here, you put the traction device on the right, and you can do it in two minutes. Okay, one of the things that's really frustrating for me is, is the clicking on the, um, sometimes you have to double click on the, is it the abduction? Some of those you have to double click in order to move them. This? Sometimes you have to click the, the, twice. The raise and lower? Yeah. If you're going to raise it and lower it, all that's doing is, and this is already bent, so. Maybe it's, maybe it's, uh, it's yeah. not that one. It's, it's the other one to, to make it go slide in or slide in and out. Oh, the lengthen and shorten? Yeah, lengthen okay. and Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's just because it's an older table. Yeah, it's an older table. Our new table does not have this at all. Not at all. It's a powered table, 500 pound articulation. Um, comes up to about that high off the floor. So, and you'll see that later. So, on the nursing side, we usually we usually keep uh, some soft rolls. Usually, when I set a table up, I'll I'll put a couple of rolls of soft soft roll down here, and then a couple of our of our ace wraps. That way the doctor can just see it and, and maybe an ABD doctor can grab it right here because on the base and they can go ahead and start patting up the foot. Right. And, um, what, and then usually the ACE wrap is used f right here on, to, to secure this on, on, on this cradle area. Mm -hmm. And lots of our patients will come down with that, that yellow foam thing. And um, a while back somebody you know, thought, why don't we reuse it because it's a disposable item. So they come down with, uh, with 
scale of attraction on with that yellow phone thing. I'll put that in here. Put it, put it right here. That's another source of support and, and foam uh, for bone right. promises. Then just take your ace wrap and just wrap it up. Yeah. And uh, a lot of our, you know, we do have this thing right here for for arm boards, but a lot, a lot of times you'll just see so people tuck them up here right. around them. That's the reason why we like to put it up. Uh, another sheet right here, a real long sheet. That way you can kind of mummy the patient and you can secure the sheet right here on their elbows and, 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 and uh, bend the scrub them right. to give you two, um, two towel clips and you can really secure yeah. the arms up. You really have to have them high so the elbows don't dip down into the view of the CR view. One of the, and you brought up a good point, Pat, uh, about uh, wrapping. The perineal post is padded. It's padded. But I would highly recommend, especially with men, especially with young men who want to have children, that you wrap this and pad it even more. Because when they start to pull traction, especially with young men, if, uh, um, let's say it's a, you know, a 30-year-old guy who rolls his motorcycle and breaks his femur, uh, the doc's going to pull a lot of traction. Because remember, femur, largest bone, strongest muscles. Going to have to pull a lot of traction, an awful lot of traction, to get those muscles pulled back to realign that bone. All that traction is right against the perineal edge. So if, if traction is too hard and too long against that, uh, a very common disorder, it's temporary, but a very common disorder is penile paralysis. So you're going to want to make sure that, as a, as a rule, that you don't pull traction just against this, that you pat it. You put some curlex around it. You put some foam pad around it whatever, okay, uh, before you start pulling traction. There is another device that you have in the OR someplace that came with this called an, um, a, a, a lateralizer or an offset device. And I don't know if you've seen that, Pat, but it's a little, uh, it's a little stainless steel adapter about that long that goes into here that will allow you to move the hip out to one side, okay? If you've got a very, very narrow-hipped patient, let's say you get a little 85-pound, um, uh, 85-year-old lady in here, and she's got a very, very narrow pelvis, very narrow hips, and her, her hip is right here. Well, because the doc is shooting through this, even though it's translucent, he's going to get an artifact. So in your OR someplace, there's a, a device called a, uh, a lateralizer or an offset device that will move this perineal post from from here over to here, okay? Or from here over to here, depending on the hip. And that will throw the hip out a little bit further off the table, all right? So I'm sure you've got that here someplace. I don't think anybody's ever yeah. asked to, to use it. Yeah, it, uh, it depends, on, depends on the doc. You can shoot, you can get good images through here without that, but sometimes the doc can't get good access depending on the severity of the, of the compression he's doing. Okay, any questions? All right, yes. I have a statement um, along with the nursing um, aspect of it. We usually use the four inch bucket to uh, wrap the uh, well leg holder because the six inch doozy doesn't really give the leg enough support. Yeah. So if you're going to yeah, use the four inch. Yeah, you, uh, I've seen a lot of a lot of hospitals that will put this on and then they'll put a gel pad over it um, just to pad it, especially around that that popliteal area. Right, right. Um, yeah, and it it varies from hospital to hospital. But they come with the bucket. Mm -hmm. Pat, are you guys doing any um, hip arthroscopies here? Oh, <laughs> infrequently. Okay. If you're doing, if the doc is doing hip arthroscopies, does anyone not know what those are? I know what you mean. Okay. Uh, it, it's relatively new, I think. Uh, the guys are just starting to get to it. 
A hip arthroscopy is just like a shoulder arthroscopy or a knee arthroscopy where they're going to go in and they're going to, to remove all that junk, all that cartilage and everything. But in order to do that hip arthroscopy, if this is the, if this is the hip, they have to, to pull the ball out of there, at least partially, uh, which requires an awful lot of traction. I mean, a lot of traction. And in order to do that so that they don't pull the patient off the table, then they'll put them up in bilateral traction. So you wouldn't use this, you would use both of these spars. And the patient would be up in bilateral traction in this configuration, okay? Um, you may see that happening more and more. Um, I, I'm starting to see more of that happening. But just remember, if the doc says that he's going to do a hip arthroscopy, you really need to set the table up for bilateral traction. Yes, sir? I've done it before uh, doing it uh, laterally. Laterally? Do you have yeah. That here, uh, you have a lateral device here. Um, and when you do a lat, does anyone here not know what a lateral femoral rod is or a lateral um, um, scope, lateral scope? Everyone knows that? Okay. When you do a lateral, and most docs are not doing laterals anymore, but occasionally you'll find a doc, if the patient is really, really heavy, he's going to want the patient on the table, and it's 99.9% it, .9 of the time it's going to be for femoral rods, and you've got that, you've got called a, it's called a horizontal perineal post and the patient is going to be in this configuration, kind of scissored with a well leg underneath, okay? And the doc is going to come in from this way. And you've, you've got that device here. Traction on both? No. <clears throat> no, the well leg would be just sitting on a, on a board, and the, the uh, affected leg would be over the top of that in a scissored position, okay? Most docs are not doing lateral femoral rods anymore. Most, most of them are, are strictly doing them supine. But you're right, that happens occasionally. Um. I hadn't really thought about using the chick table to do a, to do a scope, but that would give you great traction. Oh, absolutely. Open up the space and hit, yes. the, hit the space. Yes, yeah. yeah. All he's doing is he's just pulling enough traction to, um, to move the ball of that hip, okay? out away from, from the uh, acetabulum. Yeah, <laughs> little block there. Move it out enough so that he can get a scope down in there. And, um, and generally, the doc will, uh, regardless of how much he gets out of that, he won't, he won't pull more than two hours of traction. Uh, even if he's not finished, he says, that's enough, let's quit. But it's becoming, we're seeing that more and more. So. Do all of you know Mike Mazon, by the way? Okay. Mike is, um, is our uh, rep here from Specialties of Surgery, and he's the one that's really going to be working with you guys on this. So, any questions? Do you mind if I break this down and have you guys set it back up using a couple of... Uh, Natasha, you can uh, rest for just a moment since you were, you were the... <laughs> all right, I'm going to break it down uh, to its, its base table and then uh, maybe a couple of you can work on it um, because trust me, Mike doesn't want to get a call at 2 o'clock in the morning and neither do I saying, how do I set this thing up? So. Sometimes with people, if they really want to conserve space, I have seen it broken down where they've taken this off and just set, set, it, up it, there. set it up there right. and then this compresses yes. down even further. Yeah. So, but usually we don't do that when we, when yeah. we put, it, put it aside. The last thing I'm going to show you before we finish this evening is how to set this up in what I call the storage mode so that if it's set up that way, when you come in, all you got to do is just unfold it, stretch it out, and you're ready to go. Okay? You want to help me break this down, Mike? And it was way up high. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And then I had a dream 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Yeah. 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 This is about 28 inches, which is uh, stretcher transfer height. So you'll want to pump the table up like she's doing as far as it will go until this starts to raise. Once that starts to raise, you stop so that you've got transfer height for the patient. Get your aerobics with it, yeah. <laughs> okay, right there. Now, let's do a right hip. That's all right. You can just leave that one alone because we'll be working off of that one. There you go. Okay, that's why I'm back here if you need to do it on there. Yeah. So if you're doing a right, we're going to pull traction from down there. Right. Okay. Can you just leave this? Yeah, there? you can just leave that there. But the anesthesia doesn't like that. Then you would move it. Oh yeah. Here, all the way out. Yeah. Okay. The anesthesia doesn't like it there. Is there IV pull going to be there? Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Let's let's just assume anesthesia okay. says move that out of the way, so we can move it down here and uh, get it out of the way. Yeah, right. <laughs> but guess who's going to win? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Doing good. Upside down. There you go. On those removable side rails, the knobs go underneath. These are standard. U.S. side rail is one and one eighth inches in, in width, and anybody's side rails will fit on those. Uh, Skytrons, ours, <laughs> Steris, <laughs> almost choked on that. Every, anybody's side rail will fit on that. Okay? And at what angle do you, is there a certain angle that you, you know, put your unaffected leg holder at? Because, I mean, look at that. All those different joints. Uh huh. Thing. You've got one, two. Yeah, do I have it going there? What is the you've, third? What you've, is the you've got it fine. She, so you have. In terms of the leg, in, in terms of the leg, remember what you want to do is get that. All you're doing is supporting the unaffected leg so you can abduct it out of the way. The, the, the thing that you have to be most aware of is making sure you don't have pressure along that, para, that uh, popliteal space in the back. And that's the reason you've got a soft thing here. Okay. Okay, that's fine. What what I normally recommend as a rule of thumb is that you make this kind of a U, using this as the bottom, and then rotating this around like this, so that you've got a U shaped from here to here. All right, and that way. That way you can, then you can adjust inwardly any way you want to. Unless you're real short leg like I am. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Even though, even though it, it can. That's the reason it's called an articulating bracket. You can move this any way you want to. The, the thing that you have to remember is you want to get it as far away from the operative side as you can.
so that so uh, radiology can get a C arm in. Because remember, if if you're doing a if if the doc is doing a um, a high femoral break, okay, he's gonna want he's gonna have to come straight across here. So he he might abduct that well leg way out of the way. It's not gonna hurt the patient. She's asleep or he's asleep, okay. But that's why it's called an articulating bracket. So it'll go in all kinds of different directions. You're doing fine, Amy. What else did I have to do? Perineal post. And then this, look, of course, would go on the affected side because on a hip, the doc is going to be operating outside the drape. You forgot to tighten back. Tighten what back? You, this? Uh, if there's a slot. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Michelle. Don't do it. <laughs> I was doing this when you were just a dream in your father's head. <laughs> you wanted to avoid it. Oh, he did. Okay. <laughs> How'd she do, guys? Good. All right. Nice. Good. Good. Any any questions on anything so far? Okay. Okay. Remember, how many of you ride motorcycles? How many of your friends ride motorcycles? Any of your husbands ride motorcycles? Okay. 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 Uh, Leo. Leo. Okay. Chances are, one of these days, he'll be on this table. He rides a motorcycle, and it's probably going to be a femur. So remember, if you're doing a femur, if the if if you're doing a femur, you set it up exactly for a supine femoral rod, exactly like you did for a hip. The only difference is you're gonna you're gonna adduct across midline. That's the only difference for a supine femoral rod. Only difference. And the only other thing you didn't do, Michelle, is for a, and I didn't do this either, but for a hip, the doc is going to want the table pumped up as high as it will go because he wants to be able to look straight into that hip. That's the reason, that's the reason it's so important that those surgical lights are in the right place before you start pumping this table up. Because if we didn't, if they were over there, You'd have to lower the table, move the lights, and the doc's not going to be happy. And then if it's up this high, you can adjust these down. Right. Take down, take it up, and then this one, I'm pretty tall, I can do this, yeah. but in order to get it even so your stroke doesn't have to reverse. So if you're finished, Norton, please call 723. Okay, anybody else want to go through this, or are you guys comfortable with it, or? So it would be my recommendation that you keep the table set up in that configuration. Pardon? We always hope for the right. You always hope for the right. Yeah. Because it's the back table, and it's going to have to move the back table around. Right. <laughs> so let's set it up for the right side, and I'll show you that, in my opinion, anyway the way the table should be stored. That way, at 2 o'clock in the morning, you won't be running all over the OR, back in the storeroom, looking for parts and pieces. And you were absolutely correct. This is so, this table is, is getting old, so you really have to crank these down in order to tighten them up. This is still, by the way, the, the preferred table. We sold, we sold over 100 of these tables last year. Even though it's not powered, it's... Pardon? I'm sorry? Oh, I have no idea. I have no idea. I mean, th that was just on this table. Okay, so we've got a, a left, left traction cuff. 
we're going to put our well leg support in. I've got a lot of good friends who work for Steris, so I tease you about it, but they make good equipment. Okay, remember this articulates, so I would put this in this configuration. I bring this spar around, put it here. Bring this spar around, hit the lengthen and shorten and move it in so it's just, just past the lifting collars but not touching them. And then we lower the table. As you're doing this, make sure that this hammer doesn't hit the top. and set right on the edge. This goes up here. Okay, once you've done that, the floor space that this takes up is no larger than your stretcher. In fact, it's probably smaller than your stretcher. So once it's in that configuration, you can take it back to wherever you guys put it, store it. And the next time you have a case, all you do is expand it, pump it up, pull everything out, and you're ready to go. Provided that's the left. Provided it's the left. If it's the right, Everything just gets reversed. The only thing that gets reversed is your well leg support and your traction device.